Okay, everyone, good afternoon, and I hope you take a good rest at, at room rest. And the next coming topic is te test failed, then optimizing communication between people. The speaker, Toru Furukawa, he, is, he leads an engineering team at BASQ in Japan that works with live TV programs. His current interest is how to organize multiple teams, all roles, in order to minimize cost, time, and unnecessary communication, and to maximize entire productivity. Let's welcome him. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Toru. I am from Japan. And I am a web application developer. I'm glad people are not sleeping yet. <laughs> and <laughs> great. This talk, I will talk about oops, my experience on web application development with loosely coupled components and how to organize communication, communication between components and also between people. And my talk goes like this. First, I, I will introduce web application that's synchronizing with live TV shows. And this is what I am working on every day and I, where I found many problems every day too. But then I will talk about my problem solutions. So first, loosely coupled components. And then to make sure those components are testable and make at, and then efficient communication between people. So let me show you an example. Can you see this? Okay. So this is an example of applications working with live TV show. We broadcast this program uh, in June 15th this year. So on the right side, you see a web browser on a smartphone. Thank you, smartphone. And on the left side, you see a TV monitor. So this game goes like this. So from the road, you get red, yellow, green, or blue objects are coming up on TV. And then user tap a hexagonal object on the smartphone. And that's how you get the scores. The user scores are sent to the server, and the server calculates team result and get some ranking for users. And those rankings are shown on TV. And you can also tweet from uh, the smartphone. And that goes to also the TV screen, too. Okay. And also, you can send, um, send text message between a uh, share text message between your friends on the Facebook or Twitter. So that's some example. And we are developing a similar but different applications every day. And currently, our service architecture looks like this. So we had a common backend service as a platform on the bottom. And we built an application server on top of that. And then we put an HTML application on the top of that. So we, this way, uh, project, uh, this way project, uh, project dependent part is developed in agile and flexible style, while backend services as a co uh, con concrete and we do not change much in a short time. So we do this for several reasons. First, the requirement of specification keep changing. Like, I don't know about, is this because TV people think or Japanese thing, but they keep changing their specifications. Like the last program, they changed their specification, I think it was two hours before the live TV. So, so, so that, that's a little extreme, but we need to uh, be really agile on the agile on application part. And next, so this is not web, not only application, but also TV. And we have some knowledge on, uh, we have knowledge on uh, web applications, but not much on TV shows. And also, TV people are not necessarily familiar. Uh, and the TV people know about TV, but they don't know about um, web application of servers and networking. So we, 
we don't know much about you know, details when the project starts. And as we go on the project, then we, we learn a lot. So we want to change things a lot. And the next, next problem is, like this is live TV show. We often experience access, access spikes. So we have no traffic before the TV show. And once TV show starts, it goes like this, like um, it goes up to about several thousand requests per second in a minute and then goes down. So we need to be ready to accept those traffic spikes. And finally, we found uh, we had similar fundamental features again and again, such as you know, counting up numbers or exchanging text message between people, and also synchronizing between TV and smartphones. So we decided to make it easy to change application part. And on top of the platform, which is well tested and well tested for sudden traffic spikes, we ended up with like this. The platform components are, uh, oops, Platform components are at the bottom, and uh, we put a web application server for the for project, and then another uh, HTML application. So it works in theory, in technical point of view, but from the organizational point of view, it's still potential problems. Like many components and many people, when something does not work well, people start saying like, "This is your problem. Fix it." You know, those kind of arguments. And Frederick Brooks pointed out this decades ago, like communication overheads increased as number of people increases. And he also mentioned that he suggested how to solve those kind of problems. He said we should make small, uh, small groups in the small groups and then communicate, minimize the communication between people. This way we can achieve minimal but effective communication. So I try this. So my recent primary interest is optimizing communication between software components and also between people. So how to simplify dependency or communication? So we have two component groups, like common components and project dependent components. That those red circles, are that square thing, those are common components. And we use common components for almost all projects. We have dedicated team to develop that part and operation, operate those parts too. And also most of the tra access traffic goes to that part, so we only have to test uh, traffic, uh, traffic test on those parts And these are the project dependent part. And usually we hire engineers for project dependent component as necessary because we, we cannot control how many projects we have in the year. So like TV people you know, keep changing the requests. They just call us and say, hey, we're gonna have a show. Why don't we do that? So we cannot expect how many projects or how many applications we are developing you know, in a year. You know, we, have some partner companies and I ask, we ask them, you know, hey, we, wanna, we have this project and then why don't we, can we work with this for application part? Now, our company and our partners are belonging to web content creation industry, you know, like web pages and a flash promotion site and so on, not the web services. So when we ask partners, then you know, what language, what programming language are you using? And their typical answer is PHP. Now the important thing is, I am not saying anything, anything bad about PHP. PHP is fine, but just, you know, we have different cultures. I guess not many PHP people are not here, right? Okay, all right. I guess they are 
I think PHP conference is being held in Tokyo too, right? <laughs> so, okay. So anyway, PHP is fine. PHP is fine. <laughs> it's the same thing. Like if you have some library or component in, written in, written in Python, but that, that library cannot bind on top of PHP because you know it's hard to you know, bind those two languages. I know some people are trying to write Python on PHP or vice versa, but not you know, the way to go. So we have to, we have, we have our components communicate with PHP and Python anyway. And you know, loose coupling. So this statement is uh, from blog entry from Armin Ronacher a couple of years ago. He said, uh, write small services that speak HTTP and bridge them together with another application. And by the time he wrote this, I was exactly having this architecture problem, and I started making loosely a couple of components. And it took about a year, but it's running. So now, we connect all components in HTTP so that we do not need any language bindings. And HTTP is common you know, protocol. And then I assign engineers for uh, each component so that if you look at the people, the communication path looks like this. It does not not look bad. However, if you have two projects running at the same time, these people have more communication path and two times the number of projects. And if three projects or four projects, you, know, you can do the math. That's a lot of communication. Or, you know, mostly they need to attend more meetings and they couldn't time, spend their time to write in codes. So I think about it and I, I'm kind of trying to wrap engineers' communication. So I add new layers to simplify inter-component communications as a software. And also, I assign new role to simplify inter-people communication. So it looks like this. So web browser application basically is JavaScript, even if you know, they use coffee script or whatever, it ends up with JavaScript anyway. So we have a role to develop, the, develop and maintain a library to take care of client-server communications. And HTML application developers do not care about server, only for libraries. And we also decided to have another service layer, the bottom, it's not really bottom, but each component has authorization information to track which user does this, you know. For the counter, it has to track like, who, who incremented which number, and for communication, who sends what message. So they, they need to track you know, user ID or access tokens. So that bottom layer makes sure every component shares the same uh, credential information so that these, these developers don't have to worry about that. So now we are ready to communicate components. And then communication bus looks like this, and it's much simpler, I guess. So now, okay, okay we, are, we have components connected together in HTTP, then something goes wrong. We have problem to write correct code, so we always have something wrong. And for each, each component, the developer does their test, but for the service-wise, uh, someone else has to take care of testing for, as a service. And if something goes, some feature does not work, how do we identify the cause? The traditional pattern is like ask a developer to check their access logs or they, we ask uh, DB so that, hey, I pass this message and does, does the data stored in your DB, blah, blah, blah. And that causes another communication. So I decided uh, make, make each component diagnosable from outside, 
without asking developers to check in a DB. So we have two approaches. So first, I made access log visible to developers. So each server outputs their access log to FluentD, and FluentD saves those data on MongoDB. And we have another a little web application to search or filter or view access logs so that if I make one component and communicate with other component, and my component sends the message, and this is, I'm not really sure my request goes to third, uh, correct server or correct message, I, go, I open that web application, see how my request was exact, I can verify my request exactly reach that server. So that's one thing, one approach. And another approach is defining, defining CRUD APIs. So when I define API specification, I always add APIs to only for diagnosis. So usually, a REST API, REST URL, so that you can get object or read or update, or, or more directly, like get object, get object, set object or delete object API so that you can access the database from outside from the server. So if something goes wrong, I can call these APIs to check if internal state is correct or not. I also use these API to write automated accept acceptance tests and service setups too. And finally, this is Pythonista, for Pythonista. The standard library is URL, URL lib, or HTTP lib. Uh, fine, but I prefer uh, this module uh, called requests. It is easy to write, you can easily write HTTP requests intuitively, and, and it's, it's pretty convenient. So it goes like this, so r request.get and set URL. If you need, you can add authorization information, blah, blah, blah. Or you can post to, and you get post, you get response, and you can check response co status code, and you can get content, and if the content is form, content format is JSON, you can call .json method, which returns a dictionary of, from the JSON. So I can, I always use this, uh, this library to you know, test those services. And then for test, we use testing library to increase my productivity. The definition of productivity here is like how many tests you can write per hour. So you need tests. So it's pure capacity, pure productivity. And there are many uh, test libraries. Unit tests, nodes, pi.test, test, and recently text, test fixtures, etc. And that. I'm not going to compare those libraries. I, I just mentioned like you can do some tests with those libraries. Okay, so you can you do test and you do assertion. Usually, get like error like this. And so, how do you determine what is wrong, and how do you tell others what is wrong from these wrong messages? So you need to better communication to other people. And then unit test library. So this is a standard library is unit test. And in this case, my test class is derived from test case. And it has blah, blah, blah. And this self.assert equal, checking if x and y is equal. And if this doesn't go wrong, if, if it goes wrong, it shows what exactly data is different. Well, this is much more, this is you know, really readable and visible, easy to find what is wrong. Okay, so you connect component, you test the data, and what is, you get failed, you, you, your test failed, then next. My test code, 
And my report is readable because I love Python and those libraries are for Python, written in Python. But you know, other people are not necessarily you know, love Python as you do, and they are not very familiar with it. So should I talk in Python or HTTP? Well, this is a problem. And I get back to the beginning. I use Python to test fast. And I test fast to develop fast, right? Because you know, request, request, a requirement keeps changing. I want to implement as fast as possible. Now, I use PHP for uh, HTTP for communications because I want to loosely couple all those components. And I loosely couple components because develop fast. So we have same, so I have same you know, one goal, but we have two approaches and you know, which, which way I should choose, so that's my problem. Oops. So if I, I found this like this, I, if I stick to Python too much, my communication is tightly coupled to Python so that you know, my, com, you know, my PHP program or Java program or Ruby program, or whatever, it's hard to communicate. So I want to loosely couple my communication. So I write, this is one approach, I write a little code, uh, I put my code on the GIST. So this is a little wrapper for request module. So in, in, import CURL request as request and put a debug flag and call request get method as usual. Then my library prints out like this. So I write my test code in Python and this output as CURL command and then CURL command and result. But I copy and paste those output and tell them, hey, this is how to reproduce your problem and please fix it. So this, this way I can increase, keep, increase my productivity also, communication productivity. So I recently work on loosely coupled components and engineers and I want teams to work, I still want the team work together, but I want to optimize their communication so that their communication is effective and efficient. And yeah. that is about what I have right now. I'm still challenging and failing and learning. So it'd be great if you share your ideas, your practice, because each organization has different problems and solutions. I would be more than happy to hear yours. So if you are interested in uh, talk to me on the Twitter or uh, grab me at the hallway. I will, and I will, I will go to the party this evening too. Thank you very much for joining the talk. Anybody has a question? to ask about uh, a card to request. Uh, when we test unit, te when we do unit test, it tend to logic test, I think. But so you mean when you test card request, you uh, you, s you up server somewhere and write request, uh, put re put send request to the server. And so when testing, when in the unit test, you need to uh, uh, prepare a servers. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. uh, for, for this part, I do not use any stuff. I use, we have all components ready to test development servers. And I use all uh, you know, actual servers. Uh -huh. but, so, but for the unit test or component level test, yes, I, I, I use a mock library. 
Hmm. Oh, I see. So no, it does not does not communicate with a server, but in the lab, in the language level, it mocks. Uh, it returns a correct or wrong uh, response. Ah, uh, I see. Thank that, you. Thank you. Anyone has a question? Why you choose pre-entity? Why do I what? Pre-entity, the log, uh, log logging system, pre-entity. Why, Why you choose pre-entity? Pre I don't know. I, my engineer picked up pre <laughs> Uh, so originally, we asked them to research uh, you know, whatever you like, and they just pick up the first fluent D, and they just like it. So, uh, it also, and also, they send their data to um, the service called uh, Treasure Data or Splunk, so they, they support fluent D, so that, that, that's another reason to pick up. Thank you for uh, thank you for your session. And so I ask about the uh, backend servers. So what what kind of backend server you have to develop your uh, application, your application, TV show application? Bucket servers? Uh, uh, what what kind of backend server? Back -end you server. you say there are counter and messaging servers, and uh, do do you have do you have another servers? Uh, we for for this this project we use. Uh, we build our servers on it, Amazon EC2, and then is that your question, or do you want more details? Like uh, no, uh, I, I I said I did, I said uh, just uh, low, and you 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 are using you are using counter server and uh, um, ah, counter message. Or message. Yeah yeah yeah. Uh, under another one. Do you have another one? We have we have an um, image conversion server, which we, to convert a Twitter or Facebook image to you know normalize certain size of image, those kind of things. Oh, yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah. Might be your question. Yeah, you're correct. Thank you. Thank you very much. No? Okay. That, that, thanks to Furukawa-san. Furukawa Thank you very much. Okay, now we have 10 minutes break, right? Uh, one, more, one more session. Oh. Let's start on. Okay. Uh, okay. So next session starts at one forty.